Hello! Welcome to my pumpkin themed reading vlog. I'm really excited to be filming this video and just getting myself all in the spirit of Halloween and pumpkin-y things and fall and autumn vibes. So today I'm going to go get some ingredients for this pumpkin soup packet I have. I just need to pick up a few things from the grocery store and then I'm going to stop in at the library as well. I actually surprisingly have not been to the library since moving here and I do have a library card so I'm gonna pop on in there see if there's any more books I can pick up with pumpkins on them or just overall like Halloween themed books and then I need to be back by 7 to start my reading sprint and of course my ambiance has jack-o-lanterns and it's gonna be raining and yeah it's just a really nice ambiance for fall so anyway I will keep you all updated as I continue and yeah, it's actually chilly outside for the first time. <laughs> I'm looking, there's people around me. Um, I always feel awkward filming when there's people around me, but anyway, it feels great outside. I may take a quick walk if I have time because it is in the 60s and yeah, I'm just ready for fall vibes for this whole vlog. <laughs> All right, so I just picked up some Hawaiian cuisine. I've never had anything like it. So we're gonna see if I like it and I will report back. Okay, the lighting is so bad, please excuse that. But in theme of this vlog, I picked up a maple pumpkin latte and it is super good. I got it from a coffee shop I usually don't go to. I don't go out to coffee shops very much because I work at one and so I just don't really need to, but I figured I would try this out. And then I just happened to stumble by this Hawaiian place and I've never really tried Hawaiian food. So I'm going to try it and it looks really, really good and healthy, which is fun and exciting. Here you go. And yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm about to stream and oh my gosh, this smells really, really, really good. Oof. I bet I'm going to love it. I'm going to be reading White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. And that's not in theme with my reading vlog, but for now I'm gonna be reading that. And then I may switch over to one of my pumpkin theme books. So I started Fear Street's Halloween party in the car this morning on audiobook and I've been enjoying it so far. It's super short and it's mostly dialogue so far. So they've just gotten invited to this party and there's only nine people invited and it's basically at this haunted house on Fear Street. So this is my first Fear Street book. I've never read any of them, but it's just a light, easy read. It's definitely mostly dialogue and aimed towards a younger audience, but it's feeling nostalgic and kind of fun and Halloween-y. So I'm doing that. I'm going to run to Target. I may pick up a drink there and yeah, I just kind of want to chill in Target. I need to pick up some groceries and I could go to the normal grocery store, but I'm thinking I just wanted to go to Target and see what, you know, Target has because <laughs> I'm obsessed. And also I know that there is a book sale going on. So I'm going to head there and yeah, I'm going to be making some pumpkin lentil soup and I'm really excited to try it out because it's perfect for this pumpkin themed reading vlog.
So now I'm finished reading Halloween Party by R.L. Stein, and I really want to talk about it because it was such a fun time. So if you're looking for something that's going to make you feel nostalgic for Halloween when you're a kid and just give you some retro vibes, I would highly recommend this book. So this definitely read like books that were written in the 90s. So this was published in 1990. So it definitely feels retro and nostalgic and gave me those vibes which made me really happy. I loved it. I was actually cleaning my room while I read most of it. I read some of it in the car on my way to an appointment but the majority of it was read in one sitting while I was cleaning and it was so fun to have in the background and this was one of those audiobooks where I didn't feel like I needed to follow along visually because it was just so easy to understand and obviously a simple read I really liked it too because the majority of this novel actually took place on one night so it was fun to mostly read it on one night and get that sort of whole story arc in a small dose because it was a short little book. So you know you have the arcs of a story and a plot but it happens pretty fast and it was just perfect. I would highly recommend picking this up if you want a short little Halloween read and I was not disappointed. Also, this would be a perfect book to read actually on Halloween night and you definitely could do that. I mean, I think the audiobook was only three hours, but I listened to it sped up. So it took me about an hour and a half to listen to all of it. So that's shorter than a movie. So I would really recommend reading this on Halloween night. This also makes me want to read more of the Fear Street books and I definitely will be doing that. I really want the original covers though and they're hard to get your hands on them. So let me know if you have any recommendations on how to get the original covers. I saw some of them were on Amazon so I may go that route but we'll see. Anyway, I like this cover. It's cute and I really enjoyed my experience. Hello, so I just had the most random grocery run. I don't know what happened. It was like I was having a crisis. I just picked up random things. <laughs> I just want to show you what I got because it's so off the walls. So I got this random uh, cheese that's vegan and I know this brand is really good, but I don't know why I just got random shredded cheese. So that happened. Then I got this vegan gluten-free mac and cheese. Again, I must like really be craving cheese right now, but yeah, this stuff is really good. And then I got lettuce. Honestly, if we're being quite honest, this is mostly for my rabbit because he really likes lettuce, even though I really need to eat lettuce. Um, anyway, <laughs> that is for my bunny, mostly. And then I got this gluten-free bread because they didn't have normal bread and they just had this style and I'm gonna see if I like it and then I decided I was craving cookies so this is not pumpkin themed at all but I picked up these cookies I've never tried it again they're gluten free I can't have gluten or dairy and I think I might make them tonight and yeah I also picked up some carrots they're already in the fridge and some coffee creamer but yeah that was the most random grocery run ever but this is not Halloween themed or anything, but I am going to turn on some Criminal Minds. I don't know what it is. Also, if you hear something in the background, it's my dryer. But I just have been enjoying putting on Criminal Minds in the background while I clean and just hang out. And yeah, let me know in the comments if you like Criminal Minds. I kind of go in waves where I really like the show but then I'll kind of need a break from it and then I'll come back and watch a ton and I'm in the kind of binge watching a ton of it right now. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. And yeah, that's a little update on my night and my life. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello, so I'm stopping at the grocery store and I would like to make a pumpkin pie recipe that I haven't made in a few years actually. I used to make it all the time, but it's a gluten-free, dairy-free pumpkin pie. And so I'm gonna be making that and it's gonna make me really in the mood for the season. And I can't believe that Halloween is so close to now. I still have to get my Halloween costume. I want to be Drew Barrymore from Scream, which is just such an iconic opening scene. So I really wanna do that. So I may go to Spirit Halloween and try to see if they have the costume or part of it. I really need a blonde wig, of course, it's essential. So yeah, I'll take you all along with me. Hello, so I'm actually on my stream right now. You may be able to hear the ambiance in the background. It is a crackling fireplace with jack-o'-lanterns, which is absolutely perfect Halloween ambiance. And again, I have this gorgeous little sweater on that's perfect for the fall season. And I want to give a little update on my reading of Dark Harvest. So, this book, I had an expectation that it would be one way and it kind of has turned and I'm not mad about it. So I just got to part three and I just read a chapter that honestly was touching and heartbreaking. And yeah, like I said, I wasn't expecting that to be in this book, but I've been really enjoying it so far. I'm not so sure what I think about the writing style, like the actual words that the author is using to explain things. It's kind of taking me a little bit out of the story. I can't really put my finger on why, but I'm really enjoying the story, so the actual events that are occurring, and I really love the nostalgic feels that I'm getting from this. I love the vivid imagery that the author describes. I love how the author describes this October boy, which you can see on the cover, actually. The way he describes him, though, is really cool in the book. He talks about his specific smells and how his voice sounds and just... I really like that about the writing style, how the October boy is really, really described well. And I have a vivid image in my mind of what this October boy looks like. So it's just the writing for everything else, if that makes sense. And it could just be a little bit more kind of using old fashioned terminology because this is supposed to take place in the 1960s. So that could have something to do with it. But anyway, I'm enjoying it and I'm enjoying reading this to the Halloween ambiance on my stream. And I hope that I'll be able to finish this book tonight. I'm on page, let's see. I'm on page 108. There's only 169 pages in the book, so I very well could finish this on my sprint. And yeah, that's my update. And I would recommend this book. I'm really enjoying it. All right, I am sold on this book. I am so close to finishing. It is so freaking good now. As soon as the action picked up, I am obsessed and I'm really liking where the story is going. So I actually barely talked on my last uh, break between my reading sprints because I really, really wanted to finish this book as soon as possible. And so I will let you all know my reaction to it. And I hope the end is amazing because if it is, I'm feeling like this is a good four point five star read which is a lot higher than I originally thought I would rate it. All right I finished the book four and a half stars for me that was such a satisfying ending. I don't know why I couldn't get into the writing style in the beginning I just had to get used to it but now that I finished it I really really enjoyed that story. Once I hit about 85 90 pages I was just hooked and the action was wonderful the ending was satisfying 
and this book totally turned into something that I did not expect. So I would highly recommend this one. I read half of it during my sprints tonight and finished it during my sprints. So I would highly recommend it for a book with a pumpkin on the cover. And it is just so perfect to read right around Halloween. So four and a half stars. I loved it. So today was a total rebrand moment. I got my hair trimmed and I love it. Actually not trimmed, cut. It was basically down to my waist and so I was super nervous, um, but I wanted to do it. So yeah, I chopped off my hair as you can see. I love it. They gave it some waves, which I love. And it's all rainy and cozy today. And yeah, it's just a fun day. I'm really enjoying my fall day. It's so nice. I'm off work and so I've been chilling all day. And you can see behind me this pretty tree that changed colors. And yeah, everything is finally starting to feel like how it usually feels in Wisconsin in the fall time. However, I actually haven't been here in six years for this time. So it's so nice being back and getting weather in the 50s and 60s and 40s and 30s. I guess it kind of ranges from 30s to 60s, but yeah, it's been really nice and relaxing. I haven't gone shopping literally in probably six months. So I'm gonna haul what I got. I'm really excited. It's a ton of cozy stuff for this season. And I think I'm gonna run into Barnes and Noble and just look around a little bit since it's right across the street. And yeah, last night I read one chapter in Autumn Crow and it literally made me cry as you'll see in the video where I talk about it. So yeah, I mean, I wasn't bawling or anything, but I was tearing up and that doesn't happen a lot when I read. I keep saying that now and things are making me tear up now that I'm reading more horror and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everything will start making me tear up, but yeah, it made me tear up and oh my gosh, it was only like nine pages that first short story, but it was really moving. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to show you what I picked up at the mall and I haven't gone shopping in so long. I'm sort of changing kind of my aesthetic that I used to go for. Obviously, I just cut my hair. Um, but yeah, I love these pants. They're so cute. I love them so much. They're like plaid stretchy pants and they're adorable. I'm wearing them with these boots. And then I wouldn't normally wear this shirt with it, but I wanted to show you all. So we couldn't actually read this, the person checking me out and I, but yeah, I thought it was cute. It's tie-dye, so it's a cute look. And yeah, here's the first stuff I got. I'm gonna keep these pants on as I try everything else on. So this is the next shirt and it says Spooky Scary Skeletons. And it's so freaking cute, I love it. It was 50% off because it's a Halloween shirt. So even though it's not Halloween yet, Halloween time is almost over. So yeah, I like this one a lot, super cute. Then I got this adorable sweater. I love this detail up here. The neckline is so cute. I may actually go back and get a little bit of a smaller size because it is a little stretchy, especially kind of under the armpits, but yeah, super cute, love it. Okay, here's the next thing I'm obsessed with. So I have this hat that is like this quilted material 
And then I got this kind of oversized jacket. It's so cute. I got this camisole. And yeah, this whole outfit is such a vibe. Just I love like the oversized look to it and this like bucket hat that's super cute and will actually keep me warm. And this is just the perfect transitional outfit. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with it. So yeah, it's super, super cute. I got this backpack too. It's adorable. It's so cute. It's corduroy and so it's perfect for the fall season. Also, I got this hat and it gives me major red Taylor Swift vibes. Like this kind of Baker Boy hat is so, so cute. I'm obsessed. So the last thing I wanna show is this cute crossbody bag. And yeah, it's very obviously designer inspired. It's super cute and I am so obsessed with it. And then I got these cute earrings and I love them so much. This really looks like the Majuri um, baguette earring and also, the Majuri ring in that line. And I actually have the real ones, but this was only $7.99. So yeah, love it. I just got some Teddy Fresh stuff. It's on sale, it's their annual sale. And I got this cute little fleece skirt as well as this classic beanie. So my husband and I already have a Teddy Fresh shirt that we share. It's a size medium, so we both fit in it. It just fits us both differently. And we're gonna share the beanie and I'm so excited. And then I just decided I might as well just order a skirt to try it out. It's like a fleece skirt. So yeah, I'm so excited to get them in the mail and I'll definitely be updating you all when they come. Hello, so I just wanted to update you all on my reading of Autumn Crow. So I just finished the story, I Have No Mouth and I Must Feed, and I will say it was pretty creepy. If you have read The Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones, that is, the, the title for that one is kind of misleading, and what the story was was kind of what I wanted the title to be or wanted that story to be. So yeah, it was really good. It was certainly creepy and I really enjoyed it. It was the longest story out of this story collection so far, but I really enjoyed it and it was honestly pretty scary. So yeah, I think I only have about two more stories in the collection, but I'm really, really enjoying this book. It's perfect for the Halloween season. And I love the whole concept that it's just this town where it's always Halloween and yeah, I'm just really enjoying it. Hello, so I'm currently doing my reading sprints right now. I have this wonderful ambiance going on, but I finished Autumn Crow and I wanted to give you all a wrap up. Hello, so I wanted to give my wrap up on Autumn Crow. I just finished it and I really enjoyed it. I'm giving it a four and a half star rating and yeah, it was just such a good Halloween read. I highly recommend it. So I wanted to talk about my favorite stories in a minute, but before that, I wanted to show you I got this super cute sweater while I was out tonight. It's really chunky. And then I found a pack of these clips, these hair clips, I don't know if you can see, from Amazon. And they have all different colors. And so I'm matching like a green clip with my sweater and my outfit's not like fully done or anything, but it just makes me feel so cute coordinating. So I highly recommend that hair clip set. I can link it in the bio if you all are interested. One more thing I wanted to say really quick is I got this shirt. It kind of gives me like a Gucci logo vibe, but it's super cute. It's from Forever 21. And then I also got this knitted scarf that's super comfy, super cozy for this time of year. And it was only three bucks, so it was a steal. But yeah, let's get into the wrap up of Autumn Grow. Okay, so a lot has happened. My tripod actually just broke, so. I use a ring light to film and I have a tripod right here and it literally just snapped off. Not sure where it is in my house. I feel like things are just, it's been a disaster. <laughs> my life, I don't know what's happening right now. Everything's breaking. Like my shoes broke and then like just random things are breaking. I don't know. Anyway, hi. I have some chaotic energy going on. 
but so I wanted to share my favorite stories in the story collection and I have just little notes here but I wanted to say I really enjoyed all of them they all felt very autumny obviously very Halloweeny and it got me in the spirit and it was also really fun to read these kind of like a story a night so I spread it out a while because I've been busy but I read a couple of the stories on, you know, different nights. A few times I would read like two of the stories on a night, but it was so cool to get the experience of hearing a story from start to end within one sitting. And some of them were really, really short. Some were a little bit longer, like maybe 30 pages, but it's a cool experience to sit down and read a story from start to finish. So I really enjoyed that. And it was also fun to kind of spread it out a little bit. So I got a little nugget of Halloween, you know, on different days. So I wanted to say my favorites, so I have them written down. So Pumpkin Light was probably my absolute favorite. It was the first story in the collection. This one was super touching. It was really short and it was basically about this girl and her having an experience with her neighbor. And I don't want to really give away anything with it, but the imagery in this one was so beautiful. Actually, that's something I really loved the whole time with this short story collection. The imagery throughout was just really beautiful and vivid and Cameron's writing style just really brings out images in my mind. And I've spoken about this before, but sometimes imagery while I'm reading is hard to picture, but a lot of these I could picture really, really clearly, which was very enjoyable and really added to the mood of the book. So. I love Pumpkin Light. It made me tear up at the end. It was beautiful. And then again, all of these felt really whimsical and magical, which I love too. Some were gory actually, but they all felt like they had a childlike quality to them as well. So anyway, side note, my other favorites were Burnt Brownies, I Have No Mouth and I Must Feed, and Crypt TV. So for Burnt Brownies, it was basically about this little boy and his older sister was watching him on Halloween night and she didn't want to take him trick-or-treating. So she made him stay in his room and he was super mad about it. And basically what happens in the title happens in the book. And I loved listening to that sister-brother relationship and hearing about that because if you all don't know, I have a younger brother and I grew up kind of babysitting him and stuff. So I really related to the characters. And again, the ending was really touching and emotional as well in that one. So whenever I hear about an older sister and a younger brother and a big age gap, I'm drawn to the story. I Have No Mouth and I Must Feed was probably the scariest out of all of them. I really enjoyed this one. It felt super retro. And the concept was there is this woman and she works at this local haunt and there's this scary robot mannequin. And basically, I don't really want to say much more because these are short stories, so I don't want to give it away, but it's creepy and I really like the direction that this went and it was genuinely chilling at the end. So highly recommend that one. I loved it. And then Crypt TV. My biggest thing about this one was basically it was about this little boy and he used to live in Autumn Crow, but he moved away with his parents and he was begging them to go back to Autumn Crow, but they kept saying, you know, it's not safe there. And so he decides to sneak out on Halloween night with his friends and go to this graveyard. And this one was just so magical. I loved it. And it just, it was so cute. <laughs> as weird as that sounds like, I just love listening to this little kid's thoughts and you know, what happens, the imagery, oh my gosh, I can't say it without spoiling anything, but the imagery in this one again was so vibrant and beautiful and I could totally picture it in my head. And there was some humor in it that I absolutely loved. So I do want to point out the last story in this had a little section that was really moving in it as well. This is kind of a theme that throughout this short story collection, there were many moving moments and a lot of these were very heartfelt stories. So they were about human relationships and you know how we feel about ourselves and others and how we relate to people and it was a pretty deep story collection and there was a part at the end where you sort of understand what's going on and it kind of really spoke to me and I can't really read what it is because it gives away the whole symbolism behind the last story 
but if you've read it you probably know what I mean and I noticed that while I was reading it on my Kindle it said a lot of people highlighted that part as well. So anyway that's my wrap up for this Halloween pumpkin -y themed vlog. I hope you really enjoyed it. I had a great time. I sort of miss dressing up for when I had my live on Jordaline's channel with Jordaline and Erin Megan. It was so much fun. I originally was going to kind of film myself getting ready for it, but I didn't end up doing so. But I'll insert some footage from the live and yeah, this has been a really overall amazing Halloween season. It was so much better than last year and yeah, I hope you all had a great Halloween season, enjoyed this reading vlog, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye!